Hi everyone, Chris here from IELTS Advantage with another success story. Today we have Ding who is going to share his success with you guys so that you can learn from him. So Ding, let's start by just start by introducing yourself to everybody. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Ding from uh, Chris, Chris's class and uh, I'm recently got the score I really wanted. Uh, I've been working that for a very long time so fortunately with the help from the group, with the help from the teachers, I'm I'm really happy I got it finally. Excellent, excellent. And what scores did you get? Uh, eight, uh, overall seven point five, eight for listening, eight point five for reading, uh, seven for writing, seven for speaking. Uh, and I took the course for writing, uh, advanced. So yeah. And how many times did you do the test before you started working with us? Uh, probably uh, 10 times. Wow. I started this one uh, from 2018, October, and uh, I decided to, to try to uh, apply for the immigration group in another country. So I have to get a, a relatively high IELTS test score, and I will struggle for my uh, reading and uh, speaking part because uh, I'm a native Chinese um, citizen and I don't have a very strong uh, education background regarding this English education. So it took me a very long time to, to try to get there, but mm -hmm. uh, because of the overall situation here, I cannot get enough resources or help, uh, which could help me to, to finally achieve this goal. So I was struggling for over over one year doing this uh, process. And um, what scores were you? What were your like average scores uh, before you started working with us? Uh, I was uh, my reading and listening are pre are, uh, are pretty steady. If they were around eight, mm -hmm. but my speaking uh, my speaking was already uh, have already been seven. I've uh, been seven two times but my writing was always around 6.5 and I, I actually didn't know what's, what's the obstacle um, which are stopping me from, from getting any higher score. Mm. Yeah, that's often the, the, the frustrating thing about IELTS is that many people are stuck at let's say a 6.5 for writing and they want to improve they want to work hard but they've no idea why so it's it's very difficult to fix something if you don't know what the what the problem is so whenever we uh, started working with you what were the causes what were the reasons why you were getting 6.5 in writing uh according to my estimation uh, actually, I have a very bad control of my overall uh, grammar and vocabulary selection. Uh, to be more specific, I guess the collocations and the mistyping issue. Uh, actually, I have been listening to podcasts and reading a lot of English articles for quite a long time. But actually, it's I, I seldom have many chance to to put them into really. Uh, practical using uh, writing so so I, I i really make a lot of mistakes and i didn't follow the 100 percent uh rule to to make uh make sure that there are no mistakes yeah. in my writings good so let's focus on on grammar and vocabulary um, as those were your two two big weaknesses um so let's start off before before you you um before you got the score that you needed, were there anything that you tried that that now you look now you look back you realize that it was the wrong advice or it didn't work for vocabulary? Uh, well, the first one came up to my mind is the big words, like someone would recommend to to use some fancy and an ordinary ones, but obviously that's not ideal for a IELTS test. You have to be 100% sure about what you're writing and know the collocations just to minimize the uncertainties. And the second one, I would say the grammar is, uh, the issue. one issue about grammar is the consistency of the uh, plurals and singles, and sometimes the tense issue. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, even though I know some, uh, some part of these uh, 
this grammar using, but um, when, when I am actually trying to put it down into sentences, I found it very difficult for me to, to, to write it in the right form because I don't have uh, many, uh, I don't have any advices from, from a real native speaker or an English teacher to tell me, oh, you, you're making a mistake and this should be in another way which can be presented, but, but I, I, I don't get any feedback from that. So I was doing, doing some stupid work all by myself, but yeah. So let's stick with uh, vocabulary. So um, you were told to use big words and high level vocabulary. That doesn't work because it can often lower your score uh, because you, you're, you'll make so many mistakes. Um, but if someone was in your position and they wanted to improve their vocabulary, what, what suggestions would you give them? Mm, probably just to, uh, because uh, from my understanding, uh, many IELTS task two writings are uh, uh, concerned with uh, real life because I, I'm taking the general training test. So a lot of uh, writing tasks are about topics about real life. So if you have uh, probably a sec, 6,000 words uh, uh, total amount. I believe that's probably okay. And um, I think uh, it's, it's very hard to describe because, because for me, even for me today, even to, the, to this day after I finished this test, I still don't know what is the right, uh, I don't know how to say this, it's the, the right uh, collection of the vocabulary for the IELTS test. Mm. You have to, you have to feel it for yourself. You have to uh, do the correction service. Then you would know uh, what's your selection. What's the problem with with you, your selection? And once you've been there, you know what is the right way to do. Then you would minimize the selection for yourself, and you can do it very fluently in your test. Mm. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. So feedback was really the key for you, uh, and and also the help with from the uh, dictionary. Because uh, as you mentioned in the previous course, I, I noticed that you have to find the explanation in English. And then when you look in details, you will know the relations and uh, the very uh, reflective things in, in there. And it will definitely help for, for your writing and uh, description of certain issues. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend doing that too, because a lot of people, when they try and vary their vocabulary, and they're trying to use synonyms, for example, they will, instead of looking up the meaning of the word, they'll just look up a thesaurus or an online uh, resource. And the two words are synonyms, but they mean completely different things. So if you try and change this word to this word, then you're going to be in trouble. Uh, I was correcting an essay last night for a student, and the they were trying to change the word competing, and so competing competition between people and they changed that to racing. So they, so I, and they got very confused because they said, well, compete and race are synonyms. Like, yes, but they mean completely different things and you can't use them in that context. So my suggestion was exactly what you said was look up the meaning of those two words, understand the meaning, and then you will be able to, decide in your essay whether to use them or not. And then yeah. the other problem is that many people learn lists of vocabulary. So they're given like an academic word list or a list of band nine um, uh, words to use in their essay and they don't fully understand or learn the words in context. So therefore, they, they never know how to use them in real life. Um, so those, those two problems cause, uh, cause a lot of issues for vocabulary. So that, that's very, very good advice. And you talked about collocations as well. Um, how did you improve your use of collocations? Uh, as, as I mentioned, I actually uh, tried a lot of time to spend on dictionary, uh, the, 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 elect, uh, the online dictionary. Uh, for example, I, I recently looked look up to the word patient. Uh, it has a non meaning and also an, an and, uh, uh, ADJ meaning. Uh, so so for, for the non, it means someone got sick. And the, in the dictionary, it also said like uh, someone who need 
medical care who uh, well, probably went to hospital, uh, receive uh, treatment. You know, some wars like this, they have a very, clo very, uh, very close relationship mm. for these things. And as I mentioned, if, you, if you're writing an uh, and topic about uh, public service, uh, like the government should build more hospitals in certain areas, you can definitely use this kind of, uh, this combination of words to make your sentence look more argument arguably more convincing yeah um and then and also i would say uh the the, the accumulation of your mm. um, daily life is, is also very important i actually listen to a lot of podcasts uh like the planet money the freakonomics there, there will be a lot of uh, um, topics of your daily life you know how the economy is affecting us uh, from every aspects all, all these kind of small things you could, you know, if you find interest, you could spend, you know, two or, two or 20 or 30 minutes, just listen them mm -hmm. uh, repetitively uh, when, you, when, you when you know the certain words, then, then you will be helpful. It's another reason why we don't teach vocabulary by teaching people lists of words is because if you're listening or reading to real sources of English, you're going to hear the words in context. And part of that is hearing the collocations. So if you just see a list of words with no collocations, you'll never learn the collocations. But if you're listening to podcasts or reading the news or reading a book or a magazine or whatever, you will be seeing the words in context and seeing the collocations. And I'd also recommend when people are learning vocabulary to look up the collocations of new words to see the common ones uh, a very good um, online resources uh, website called just the word um, i'll get i'll get our editors to put it uh, down here just the word.com um, and they'll give you all of the most common uh, collocations um, for every any word uh, really which is very very useful um, so that's, that's good advice as well. So let's move on to, to grammar. You mentioned that uh, plurals, for example, were, were a problem with you. Were, was that the only common uh, or, or, or weakness that you had um, when it came to grammar? Uh, the, the, another mistake I often make is, uh, is the, uh, uh, the test issue. I actually, uh, if, if I'm, uh, writing the task two or task one uh, in, in a letter, when I describe a thing happened in the past, I usually forgot it, the, uh, my chorals. I have to follow the same tense uh, for my, for my, from my main sentence. Like, uh, I went to the, like, I went to the, uh, uh, the office yesterday and, uh, and uh, where I saw Mr. Lee, like something like that. If 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 I if before I take the course, I would say I went to the office, uh, and I, and I and I see it, and I'm and I meet Mr. Lee. Some some uh, small mistakes like that because because I I don't train train all this. I I didn't have many practice on these things, so there will be a lot of mistakes, careless careless one, but very uh, fatal one. I would say. And how did you overcome those problems? Once we helped you identify what your, you know, two or three areas of weakness were, how did you overcome those, those grammatical issues? Uh, at first, I was very nervous about that because uh, uh, against, your, uh, against your advice, I should, I should be fully prepared to take the test. I actually booked the test uh, to, to, to give myself some uh, pressure. So when, when, that's the, so, 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 the opposite of my. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the wrong thing. You, you guys shouldn't do it. You guys should definitely not do it. So, so when I find out all these issues, there was about two or three weeks, just mm. maybe two two more weeks left, and all I all I uh, have to do, or, no, all I can do is just uh, force myself to write like over twenty or twenty five essays all by myself. And once I have write by myself, I spend like two more, uh, like 40 or 50 minutes, uh, just check all by myself. Mm -hmm. to find, just find out all these same mistakes that I have made in the previous times. Uh, once you have been there, uh, you notice that you're, oh, I have made this wrong. I should probably choose another word. I should probably uh, avoid these kind of things. And 
after repeat, repetitive tests, uh, you know, practice, I, I find that uh, I probably uh, make progress on that. Yeah, because, no, that's a uh, very, yeah. it's a, a very effective strategy, uh, becoming ind an independent learner and, and fixing your own mistakes when it comes to grammar. So, you know, we, we have a grammar course and we can show you the rules and explain the grammar to you. But at the end of the day, the, the student needs to go away and fix their own mistakes because that is going to lead to the to the um, to progress uh, because if a teacher is is doing it for you constantly saying okay you need to this is a mistake this is how to fix it that's okay and we do that but you need to combine that and become independent and start to fix your own mistakes because that is where you're going to see the, the most progress and um, so even though you only had two or three weeks you probably chose the most effective strategy um, and that's why why you were successful um, and, and for m many students watching that can sound counterintuitive because you're you think oh I need a teacher and a teacher should do everything for me no a teacher should be doing 10% or 20% for you the other 80 90% you need to, to learn to do it by yourself because the teacher will not be sitting beside you on test day you, you know yeah I totally agree with that Excellent. you have to prepare your own mindset for that yeah 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 I, I mean even some of the students who we, we work with um, we've asked some students to to leave the course because they want us to do everything for them um, and we say well we can do that but you're not going to pass the test um, and, you know, there's um, uh, an expression in, in English, spoon feeding, that when you spoon feed a child, they will never learn to eat. They have to, you have, yeah. they have to pick up the spoon themselves and, and learn how to eat. And what we do is we show the, the, the students, this is how you eat and, and, <laughs> and, and tell you when you're, you're not eating properly. But we don't spoon feed our students because it, it only teaches you how to be spoon fed, not, not to be an independent learner, you know? Yeah. And I know that can be frustrating for some students. They don't like that, but I only do what works. I don't, you know, yeah. Not, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I don't do things to make people happy. I only make, yeah. do things to get them the IELTS results they need. So any, yeah. any final advice that you would give anybody uh, uh, if you were in the same position as, as you? Yeah. Uh, just shout out to the Chris group and also uh, one important thing I, I want to mention very much is uh, you should you guys should be really serious about the critical thinking if you're from uh, some certain Asian countries mm. because uh, the ideal generation uh, that uh, that will be a very important fact in your uh, essay writing uh, because of some uh, education issues here in China or other countries you guys probably don't have a chance to to actually find the right way to 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 put down your thoughts uh but but just just try to practice by yourself and if if you get it you will you will find it very helpful yeah it's one of the reasons why we added the whole critical thinking course as my wife is from vietnam and it's not that there's a right or wrong education system there are just different education systems there are different cultures but one of the things that I noticed was in, in certain countries, um, critical thinking and making arguments, especially and arguing your case, which is a lot of essay writing is critical thinking. And, and a lot of people from different backgrounds, different cultures find, find it difficult to do that. Same with uh, idea generation. It's often not that the person lacks intelligence or lacks knowledge it's because they in their culture they have not been asked to think about things from many different angles um, and many different perspectives so critical thinking is is key often for some students and for some students they've no problems with grammar no problems with vocabulary no problems with writing but critical thinking is is uh, something that they they really really struggle with so we've seen a big improvement in in scores since we introduced the critical thinking course to to the vip course so thank you for mentioning that because it's really important for a lot of students yeah excellent okay i guess that's all excellent <laughs> excellent all right well what what are your plans now for the future uh, I'll probably apply for the Canada uh, immigration program. 
so I hope for hopefully if anyone for anyone for you uh are in, are in Canada now will probably uh, have a chance to to talk. You you guys can leave my uh, email in your mm -hmm. uh, in your videos. If someone is interested, you can also write to me. So I will I'll, I'm very more than happy to to write back to you guys. Excellent. Just recommend you to to Chris to Chris's <laughs> course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Ding. And if you uh, need any help in the future during your immigration process or anything like that, feel free to get in touch with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also happy to, to meet you guys. Excellent. Yeah, Online from the internet. Yeah. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, Chris here again. Hopefully you enjoyed that success story video. That student was part of our IELTS VIP course. And on that course, we show students exactly where they're going wrong and exactly what to do to get the score that they need. And we give them all the help and support that they need in order to get a seven, eight, or even nine in their IELTS test. Now, we only work with a really, really small number of students. Because of the level of help and feedback and support that we give students, we can only work with a very, very small number of them. But we also have more success stories than any other online or offline course in the world, which has created a huge amount of demand for our course. So we're the only course in the world, I believe, that has a very, very, very long waiting list. If you want to join that waiting list, all you have to do is just click here and you'll be able to add your name, add your email address, and then when one of our students becomes successful and leaves the course, the next position can be for you. Hopefully see you in there. Bye-bye.